bus. And so uh, it is a tough job, but we've got the right people doing it. They're dedicated, and we're going to do what we can with technology and with other things to help them uh, do their job easier. Now, a, a related story that has been in the news uh, in Iowa and, then, and also locally recently is Cadence Law. Um, the Iowa legislature recently passed um, this law named in memory of a, of a young child, I believe, who lost her life because of an accident involving someone not not stopping for a bus. Now, when when buses stop, they put their their little stop sign out, uh, and uh, traffic oncoming traffic and the and the traffic behind the bus are required to stop. They really are. Um, People have said to me in, in routine conversations, they never know when uh, they should stop for a school bus. There's generally two stages. Uh, the, the bus drivers first flip on some warning lights that you can see when you're behind the bus. And that begins to tell you they're getting ready to slow down, they're getting ready to come to a neighborhood pickup, and they're getting ready to stop. And you generally don't see that from the front of the bus when, you're, when, when the bus is headed toward you. But the most clear signal is when that stop arm goes out, you see a red stop sign. Uh, some of the newer buses, actually, uh, that, there's some lights. Um, when that thing goes out, you cannot, uh, from either direction, either from behind the bus or if you're in front of the bus, headed toward the bus, you can't uh, go any further. You have to stop as well. It becomes an intersection, if you will. You can't, you can't go. Um, and there have been people that have been blowing through those, and the, 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 the real tragedy of that is no one knows whether there's going to be a child walking in front uh, of that bus. And uh, so we, we there is Caden's Law now, and I understand that uh, Representative Bruce Braley is going to be here uh, talking about some new federal legislation that he's proposing. Um, and so it, it's, it's a darn serious deal. No one wants to, because they're in a hurry, no one wants to inadvertently hit a kid uh, with their car. So that's what those stop arms are for. So it's serious business. We, we urge people to, to pay attention to that, slow down, and help keep our kids safe. Well, speaking of traffic cameras, um, like we've heard so much this legislative session, and they have down at Cedar Rapids, and if you go zipping down the interstate, a, a traffic camera takes your picture and you get a ticket. And uh, some of our board members have been thinking about whether or not we should put a camera on the stop arm of a car that records uh, drivers that, that blow through those because the, it, it, it is just so serious uh, to potentially hit a child. Absolutely. So always a good reminder uh, to anyone who is out driving. Now switching gears a little bit, um, another uh, item in the news for the Waterloo Schools lately was that one of our board members has announced his intention to resign from the board. David Meeks, who has been on the board uh, for several years now, um, is um, planning to resign uh, in June, in mid-June. David is. Um, he has, um, since he gave up his job uh, with the city of Waterloo in the Human uh, Rights Department, uh, David has uh, been forming a consulting company, and it, it, it makes him, uh, he ha has to be out of the area periodically. Well, quite often, I should say. And so uh, he, caring so much about the school district and the board, uh, decided that he, uh, with all of those job responsibilities, he uh, could not do justice to both things, and he uh, announced that he'd be that he would be stepping down. I think it's at the June 11th yes. board meeting. Mm -hmm. So we're currently looking for someone to fill that district uh, that extends all the way from uh, the Evansdale Elk Run area all the way up through North uh, uh, North Waterloo and uh, over to um, I don't have the exact street, but it's in the area of Highway 63. If you can get on our website and look at the map, 
but it's, it's a good portion of north uh, east Waterloo and um, certainly north, north and east of the river. And we, we need uh, people that uh, are interested in being uh, school board members to uh, send your interest to uh, Sharon Miller, the board secretary. Uh, and you can look on the website for that address, but it's basically millers at waterlooschools.org. And uh, we'd like to know of your interest. And uh, the board has, has uh, put out a call for applications. The deadline for those will be Friday, May 11th at 4.30 in the afternoon. And then um, there will be an opportunity for applicants to make oral presentations uh, to the board at the uh, May 14th regular board meeting. And then the board uh, is expected to take official action on Mr. Meeks's resignation and then replacing him with an appointment at the June 11th board meeting. And uh, I, let me just say, the oral presentation doesn't have to be uh, a fancy uh, doctoral defense. Uh, we just want someone to get up, tell us a little bit about themselves, and it can be very uh, easy, low stress, doesn't, doesn't have to be formal. Now the other interesting thing is, uh, this is an extremely high-paying job, and, um, and you know I think it's twenty to thirty thousand dollars a year, isn't it, Sharon? Or is that a different state? Oh, that might be a different state. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> no, it's a volunteer job, and uh, you you really uh, the the satisfaction you get in helping our young children get the best education possible is your pay. And it's, uh, we are told it is a very rewarding job. It is quite demanding, um, and there's a lot to learn about how, how schools operate and what the issues are, but it is uh, uh, very rewarding. So, and it's, a, it's teamwork. It's not one person doing what they want to do, but it's, it's melding your viewpoints in with six other individuals and saying what's best for the community. And so the least effective board members that I've seen over my 31 years would be those that are just single issue. Like if the only thing you cared about was athletics and you got on the board and that's all you ever talked about, that would not, it, it wouldn't work very well. But if you're interested in being on a team, a team of citizens, and that's how we do democracy in the United States, uh, it's a team of, of volunteers that are trying to make the best decisions for a children's education. And if anyone is interested and would like to, well, for one thing, find out if they, in fact, reside in the director district that is um, where the anticipated opening is, uh, they can call me at the Education Service Center at 433-1800 or email me, as you said, millers at waterlooschools.org. And Aren't you glad we switched that over to the waterlooschools.org rather than that crazy address we had before? You know, that is so much simpler to tell uh, people and to remember. Um, and the, the old one still works. Absolutely. The old k12.ia.us, uh, yep. a lot of dots in there. Uh, so the old one still works, but the, uh, the new one's a lot easier to use. Speaking of web addresses, we've just um, worked in a partnership with the City of Waterloo and, and we're uh, sharing technology services now. We, we have a, uh, just the greatest technology department I've ever worked with uh, in, in all my years. And, they, uh, we met with uh, Mayor Buck Clark and we said, how can we save taxpayer dollars and how can we get better service to not only Waterloo Schools but Waterloo City, uh, the City of Waterloo, uh, the offices and all the related uh, departments. And, and we agreed, uh, the Mayor and I agreed we would share uh, technology services. And so Matt O'Brien, our Director of Technology, has uh, this, this past Friday started working part-time, uh, almost half-time, for the city of, of Waterloo. And, and uh, so hopefully the taxpayers will appreciate that we're, uh, I think this represented close share to a $50,000 savings for taxpayers. And uh, I hope people uh, appreciate the fact that we are trying to save money. Well, you know, that's one of the ways that the city and the school district are collaborating. And we continue to find more and more 
of those opportunities. Uh, for uh, about a year now, the city has been hosting the district's uh, cable TV operations, and they now maintain the studio and the equipment, and uh, uh, we provide programming, and uh, we are hosting the city's website, and now providing some more web services for the city. Well, and then, and then the most visible partnership is probably uh, the school resource officers that we've been using for, I'm guessing, over 10 years. And uh, that's been a great partnership. So uh, it's just better when governmental uh, organizations work together and share services. And we're, we're not done looking for those collaborations. Uh, it's an ongoing effort, but uh, we're really happy to get this one launched. The only thing I refuse to do, Sharon, is I'm not going to personally pump up the bladder dam. I just, <laughs> I just don't have the energy to do that. So the city's going to have, Mayor Clark's going to have to pump up the bladder dam on his own. The, okay, he's responsible yes. for that. Yes. Okay. Well, I don't think that's a surprise. Okay. Then. Okay. <laughs> Um, well, moving on to uh, some other news that we have, um, East High School has um, a new principal effective next year. They have a new principal, but it's certainly not someone new to Waterloo East, uh, Marla Padgett, uh, and I wish I would have remembered her maiden name right now, but Marla Padgett graduated from East High School a number of years ago, and uh, later she taught there. Uh, for quite a number of years, and then Marla has been one of our very effective uh, principal, secondary principals in the district. She's currently just finishing, I think, her 11th, 10th or 11th year at Central Middle School, but Marla Padgett is going to be the new principal at East High School. Um, I have known for years that Marla had a real passion uh, to get back to East High School. She wants to make a difference there. She's a Trojan through and through, and uh, the staff I, I've heard are, are elated that Marla's going to be joining them. Uh, and this was all made possible because Dr. Willie Barney, the, the principal that's been there for five years, is joining us in the district office, and he's going to be our assistant superintendent and going to be over all secondary schools. So it was a promotion for both of them, and we're looking forward to working with both of them. And uh, there will be um, a new principal at Central, but we don't know who that is yet. That process uh, to uh, find a, a highly qualified person there is probably already underway. It is, right. And, as well as a search for the principal at West High School. And you know, uh, speaking of underway, um, we start uh, training teachers in leadership capacities. And some of those teacher leaders, uh, and we always need teacher leaders, no matter what. Every building has teacher leaders. But sometimes those teacher leaders step forward and want to become lead teachers or assistant principals. Or, and we start then as a district growing our assistant principals. And then the, the thought is that for most, not all, but most of our administrators, we 